Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Allow me to invite you for a walk through the grounds of Prague Castle. Prague Castle is a traditional residence of rulers of uh, the country, where now is uh, the Czech Republic, but it used to be uh, Czech Kingdom. It used to be the part of Austro-Hungarian Empire, for instance, and from 1918 it was Czechoslovakia. In 1993 Czechoslovakia uh, was uh, converted into Czech Republic. Czechoslovakia split apart and there are two countries, so nowadays Czech Republic. And uh, Prague is the capital and Prague castle is the very center. We are looking at the cathedral of Saint Vitus and at this moment it's very quiet. It's the evening. The grounds of uh, Prague Castle are open until 10 o'clock uh, in the evening from 6 a.m. until 10 uh, p.m. and today it's a beautiful day. You see the sun is coming to sunset and the cathedral is so beautifully lit up. So allow me to invite you. I will just switch to for a moment so you will know who is your guide. My name is Ilona. Nice to meet you. Hello. And uh, allow me to lead you now through the courtyards of uh, Prague Castle. So let's take a walk. Here uh, behind uh, we are leaving the Royal Garden which was started in the 16th century and uh, it was then connected uh, by a bridge. First a uh, wooden bridge later on by the solid construction that split the uh, valley which is down here it's called uh, moat uh, no yes moat of uh, stacks uh, but uh, actually it's not a moat it's really a valley that was uh, created in natural way uh, by erosion you can see there is a stream of the water not very rich in water but uh, this uh, uh, modes uh, of stacks is uh, accessible to publics, but uh, there will be another tour on that subject. And at this moment, I really want to let you share with me the beauty of this view. Uh, the uh, spires, those steep dark spires, that's the newest part of the cathedral because it's the uh, oldest part. The other end was started in 1344. This end was finished in 1929, uh, modeled after the cathedral in Cologne. It's a neo-Gothic architecture, 1929 only finished, but started in 1344. Let's now enter through the northern gate at the moment. I'm not the only one here. You can also stop and have a look to the uh, to this deep valley also from this side and over there it's a part of the Royal Garden there is Ball Games Hall and at the very end of the Royal Garden there is a Summer Palace Belvedere but let's enter through the gate and in a moment we are going to see a beautiful water fountain from the late 1600s as a matter of interest there used to be stables here on the left. Now it's a space used as a gallery, but you can see imperial stables. Maybe it's not visible, but it is on the glass. But let's have a look at this beautiful view. This is the second courtyard of Prague Castle. Very romantic, very few people. Actually, to enter the grounds of the castle, you have to get through security, but uh, nothing serious. Just so walk through the gate, they peep into your back and they let you go in. And uh, still, tourism is very little. Uh, there are no lines, no queues and it's very easy to come here and enjoy the castle. During the daytime you can uh, go into the interior, see the interiors of the Cathedral of St. Vitus, Old Royal Palace, Basilica of St. George, and uh, you can walk through the Golden Lane seeing also interiors of uh, tiny houses of the Golden Lane, but uh, by the evening 
there's on contrary the advantage that Golden Lane is accessible without any tickets. We are looking at a flag. Uh, this is the flag of the President of the Czech Republic. And when the flag is there, as you can see it very clearly, it means the president is uh, within the grounds of the Czech Republic. It doesn't mean that he's necessarily inside here of Prague Castle, even though Prague Castle is really its new royal palace. These uh, interiors, uh, they serve as a presidential residence. Well, let's have a look at the first courtyard just to have an idea how large is the space. I'm walking pretty fast and yet it seems that we are moving slowly. So I'll try to speed up because I want to show you as much as possible by this time of the day. Look how romantic it is. There is a gate uh, with the statues of fighting giants. Uh, if to walk through the gate I would have to re-enter through security again. So I'm not going uh, to leave this first courtyard or uh, court of Honor. This is the place where daily at 12 o'clock there is a ceremonial changing of the guards and also when uh, the Czech president has some official guests to welcome them. So that ceremony of welcoming the guests takes place exactly here. Up on the hill over there in the distance you can see a copy of an Eiffel Tower. We call it in Czech language Petrinská rozhledna because the hill is called Petřín rozhledna. It's a view tower. It's only 65 meters high but it stops it's on the same level or maybe even a little bit higher uh, than where is the top of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But you have to measure it with the hill below so that means uh, you have to measure it from the sea level. Uh, if to get closer, uh, what you see outside, it's the castle district town, so-called Hradčany, uh, founded in 1320. There are beautiful buildings, uh, former noble palaces. Uh, today, some of these buildings, actually in particular the ones that you are looking at, uh, they are managed, they belong to National Gallery and they are collections of uh, old masters, for instance, and uh, other beautiful art pieces. Uh, you can also recognize, let me show you closer, that there is a statue in front of us watching us from the distance. That's actually a statue of the first president of Czechoslovakia, Tomas Garik Masaryk. He became the president in 1918. Uh, he resigned in 1935 and uh, a couple of years later he died, uh, but uh, he was uh, more than 80 years uh, old, so no wonder that uh, he resigned to his post once more. Let's have a look at the flag on the roof and here you can actually enjoy a lovely view of an old gate. This gate, it's about one and a half century older than the surrounding buildings. So to speak about those surrounding buildings, I have to speak about new royal palace from the times of Empress Maria Theresa, that means uh, more or less mid uh, 1700s. Italian architect Niccolo Pacassi was directed by Empress from Vienna to Prague and he redeveloped the castle. So if you can imagine the place once more, I will return back. So there used to be a moat and there used to be a drawbridge, but from uh, mid 1700s onwards, the castle uh, got this uh, appearance more, uh, more like fancy, more like a chateau, um, representative uh, residence rather than uh, the medieval, medieval castle. And of the older construction, uh, or older buildings of the castle, you can recognize this gate. It is from 1614 and it's from the time of Emperor um, Matthias, uh, brother of Emperor Rudolf uh, II, 1614. And look at it. Well, in a moment we'll walk through, but I would like to draw your attention to these two flag poles. The one on the left has the Czech flag. The one on the right uh, has the flag of European Union. And these flagpoles, 
they are from the beginning of the 20th century and they were designed by Josef uh, Plechnik, very uh, successful architect, very famous architect, who was actually not of Czech origin, but he was Slovenian from Ljubljana. But uh, he lived in Prague uh, for a couple of decades and he worked, he became professor at the uh, Academy of Architecture and he also uh, redesigned the interior of part of the a uh, new royal palace, so this what you see, it's the column hall designed by Josef Plechnik. You can recognize, even though it's not so clear, uh, because uh, this is through the glass and there's some reflection, but you can recognize that he connected uh, two floors and he supported the walls by numerous uh, columns and there's this interesting staircase. Well, if you have a look on the opposite side, if you have a look on the opposite side, there is uh, the entrance from 1700s, very much in that uh, late Baroque style. So you can, we can have a look at it closer. And in this style, with a lot of um, decoration, have a look on the ceiling and statues. With all those decorations, the interiors are in this style. continue and I will let you enjoy a lovely view look at the towers from here those spires well visible lit up by sunshine the Sun is reflecting in the windows of this new royal palace there's also the chapel of the Holy Cross which does not serve uh, religious purposes anymore uh, this is now the treasury where there are treasures from the cathedral of saint vitus and there's this beautiful water fountain from late 1600s it was restored recently it got the symbol of habsburgs on the top and it is so-called leopold fountain because this was created during the rule of the Emperor of uh, Habsburg's dynasty, Emperor Leopold. Let's have a look. There is a picture. So here we have this Leopold I of Habsburg's who ruled for a very long uh, time. In the uh, 1600s, he was very musically uh, talented, gifted. He loved uh, theater as well. And from his time, there is also the symbol of this L. It's a symbol for a Leopold. Look at the lovely water fountain. And here we have the old inscription. And you can see 1686 finished. Well, let's continue. There is an interesting structure that looks like cage for birds, but this is definitely not a cage for birds. Uh, it was a special cage uh, that uh, protected the water in a well. Well, was well the water actually where there's no water, there's no life. So it's about 17 meters deep well. It's not possible to have a look inside. But let's continue. So we came through that gate on the left. We took a walk through this uh, second courtyard to the first courtyard. We see the flag, Chapel of the Holy Cross. This beautiful work by, by um, architect uh, Šipek, Bořek Šipek. <laughs> Here you can have a look open daily and uh, there is a plan of the castle complex. We entered from here and uh, actually this way we look to the first courtyard and now we are going to see the cathedral. So in a moment. The entrance fees, you can have a look. Uh, there is only a limited uh, entry. For instance, the treasury is not open, the art gallery is not open, but uh, Nevertheless, there's still a lot to see, and as you may 
uh, recognized even now by the evening when all the sites are closed. Uh, I mean, their interiors are not open to publics, but still you can enjoy the beauty. So have a look at that fantastic view. So this is how the how the cathedral looks like lit up by the beams of the uh, s sunset, sun on sunset. Look at the beauty. And down here, so we are coming uh, from the side of that newest part. So this end was finished in 1929. Uh, the decoration is very rich, as you may recognize. Once more, there's a beautiful rose window. And I hope that one day you come here to see the cathedral from inside, because it's famous for its beautiful stained glass windows. One of the windows uh, was designed even by uh, Alphonse Mucha. Uh, artist who was a leader of Art Nouveau style and it's because this newest part of the cathedral the one that we are that part what we are looking at that was built from the end of the 19th century completed in 1929 so even these beautiful doors where you can read the whole history of uh, the cathedral from when the very first church on these grounds was founded by Duke Wenceslas, uh, whom you know as good King Wenceslas, Saint Wenceslas, it's the man who is uh, to the right of the eagle and you can see him holding a box and there is an arm on the top. Can you recognize? I can get it a little bit closer and you can recognize there is an arm and that arm, that's the holy relic. That's the arm of St. Vitus. The cathedral bears the name of St. Vitus. So once this Wenceslas got as a gift this holy relic, he found it, Rotonda. And you can see it here. It was in order to store it in the cathedral, in the, in the church, in that rotonda, round-shaped. It was all what preceded the cathedral. Here you can see that Rotonda was redeveloped into Basilica, the church of this appearance. And then Charles IV, whose portrait you may see here, this is a copy of busts that are inside of the cathedral, in the oldest part of the cathedral. But this door is from around uh, 1925, uh, created by uh, sculptor Otokar Spaniel. But you can find Charles IV also on the right, and that's him holding uh, to the right of the lion, uh, holding some larger like sarcophag or, or coffin with more relics related to St. Vitus and actually also related to other saints because Charles IV was a passionate uh, collector of holy relics. He was a very, very religious person. And he decided to replace those older, uh, older, churches by cathedral in French style. He invited French architect Matthias of Arras and the works were started in 1344. Later on Matthias of Arras was replaced after his death. He was replaced by Peter Parler, German architect. The same one also designed um, Charles Bridge. So you can see the works on the cathedral then twice the works were interrupted. Here we can, for instance, recognize unfinished cathedral. You see uh, the flying buttresses from the side. You can see the tower, but it's unfinished. And then look at the last field. It's repeating of what we have seen earlier, rotonda with the arm of St. Vitus. That's repeating of this motif. So here I can use the gate to tell you the story of the whole cathedral. 1344, it was started in that today's appearance. Prior, it was rotonda in a round shape where Wenceslas, who founded it, was later on buried. 
then it was redeveloped in the 12th century into a larger church, but all that church is gone today uh, since uh, it was replaced by this cathedral starting in 1344 and finished at this end in 1929. So during the daytime, I hope that one day you find an opportunity to come uh, to Prague and uh, to see it on your own eyes because this complex is really unique. It's the largest actively used castle complex in the whole world and as such it's even listed in Guinea's book of records. So with all the courtyards, the gardens, uh, terraces uh, and all the uh, connected parts. It's really a huge, it's a massive uh, complex. Look at the light of the sun. It creates a very, in my opinion, romantic uh, atmosphere. I believe that you enjoy this view. Here we have one of those official entrances into the new royal palace. There is a Czech flag and looks like that somebody is coming to the office but it's not the president because when the president comes here they drive him through this gate. Look at it. This gate from the other side opens. Obviously it can be open even from this side and it's like a special private access to lift and then to the offices and the rooms that are officially used uh, when, for instance, the president uh, meets the um, ambassadors or when uh, he meets uh, and uh, confirms new, uh, new ministers, for instance, or some politicians and so on. So uh, that's these rooms are very rarely open to publics. Uh, used to be twice a year, one in May, one in October, but uh, lately uh, it's inaccessible. We just hope that in the future these things change. Look at the view of this side gate. There is a fantastic mosaic from 1300s. It's called Golden Gate because during the daytime when sun, which is now already hidden behind these buildings, but during the daytime the sun is somewhere here above these roofs and beams of the sun come and reflect on this mosaic and it really makes impression that it's uh, golden. Uh, the motif and we have to say it dates back to, uh, to 1373. Uh, it represents the motif of the Last Judgment. On the left field, it looks, it symbolizes open graves and angels take the good ones into the heavens. Uh, the right side, on contrary, symbolizes the hell with those kind of bluish devils in between red flames so it's to punish those who misbehave and in the middle there is image of Jesus Christ among the angels and there are six patron saints those known in that time uh, six patron saints of this country so from the left that's Saint Procopius that's then there's um, Saint Sigismund uh, then uh, Saint Vitus, uh, uh, there is Saint Wenceslas, Saint Ludmila, and Saint uh, uh, Prokopius. So Wojciech Adalbert was the first one on the left. Prokopius is on the no, on the other way. Uh, that uh, first one was Prokopius, and uh, uh, Wojciech or Adalbert in green. It's the one on the right hand side. And below, this is quite important. Look into those two triangles. If you can recognize above the gate on the left with that blue uh, background you can recognize portrait of Charles IV and on the right it was his fourth wife uh, Elizabeth Polish of Polish origin Elizabeth of Pomerania so 
during the life of Charles IV, this mosaic was created, and then uh, around uh, 1998, it lasted three years, this mosaic underwent a very, very serious uh, reconstruction when uh, the uh, all the works were conducted even in cooperation with the specialists from the Getty Museum from Los Angeles. And once more, let's have a look a little bit closer. Can you recognize that there are two windows? One would say, well, who needs windows in the middle of uh, in this mosaic? So behind this mosaic, there's a very special room and it's safe. It's a special room uh, that serves as a storage place for original crown jewels for instance the royal crown from times of Charles IV and then uh, scepter and orb from 1500s from the times of Emperor Rudolf II and speaking about Emperor Rudolf II we can recognize his symbol over there above this beautiful window on this tower you can see the tower is nearly 100 meters high and here you can recognize R, letter R, that's symbol for Emperor Rudolf II. And uh, this tower, it's accessible. You can climb up nearly 300 steps, see some of seven bells. The entrance is down here. Uh, you pay separate entrance fee. It's not included in the fee of uh, the ticket uh, that you buy to enter the cathedral. Old Royal Palace, Basilica of St. George. So this is charged separately, but the view from there is really fantastic. Once more, let's have a look to the courtyard down here. And you see that there is uh, that column, monolithic column made of granite. Uh, that's from 1928, when Czechoslovakia celebrated first uh, 10 years of its existence, 1918 declared, 1928 celebrated. The column was supposed to be even taller, but it got uh, broken on the way when uh, uh, it was transported uh, from the quarry some 200 kilometers away from Prague. So it was very difficult to transport it and unfortunately it got broken. The statue of St. George, it's a copy of the statue from the 14th century, from times of Charles IV. However, the design of the water fountain was created in the 20th century, first half of 20th century, by architect Josef Plechnik. Plechnik also designed the column. Uh, we can see more works by Plechnik here. There is a, a bull's uh, staircase over there. There are three girls admiring the staircase. It's an interesting architecture. Uh, we are looking at the entrance to a staircase and the staircase was built through this building in front of us and connects this courtyard with the southern gardens and it's called bull staircase because you see it's on heads of four bulls you can see one of them closer and look at these images of ladies and down below is the date 1929 i'm not sure if you can recognize it but look at the view of the city you can i hope you can recognize at least a little bit no it's not very clear but uh, you can see that we are high and the staircase goes down to those southern gardens by now the view of the city is really fantastic uh, once more the view of the cathedral Behind uh, the windows was this gilded grill. Uh, there is the most significant chapel, Chapel of St. Wenceslas. You can find a grave of St. Wenceslas in that chapel. It's uh, very beautifully uh, decorated in the style of the 14th century. Um, so-called incrustation. It's an uh, inlay created of tiles of uh, semi-precious stones. And from that chapel, there is a possibility to enter that special room where the original crown jewels are stored. Corridor connects the old royal palace with the cathedral. Yeah. 
you see the surface gets rougher than what we walked earlier. You can see the difference. And here we are looking at the old royal palace behind the windows. There is a hall from 1500 here and uh, it was by its time the largest hall for secular purposes in all Europe, about 200 feet long and uh, it was used for various celebrations, cel ceremonies, coronation festivities, but also as a marketplace with uh, selected goods. Merchants were allowed to offer fine fabrics, jewelry, artworks, and so on. Uh, but uh, there used to be a time even of uh, using the, the, the hall for night's tournaments. Can you imagine jousting on the horseback indoor? That's quite special. So another thing that I would recommend you, once you are in Prague, once you are at Prague Castle, go and see the interiors. There's actually even more to see in the lower rooms that date back even to 12th and 14th century, centuries. Uh, you can uh, find uh, the exhibition called The Story of Prague Castle, and you can see the whole development of the castle complex. At the moment, let's enjoy the view of another lovely structure. This is Basilica of St. George again. Well, isn't that romantic how beautifully it's lit up by sunshine? These last beams of the sun heading towards the, uh, that moment when it disappears behind the horizon. Uh, this Basilica of St. George has its history back to the 10th century when the uh, convent was started here. Later on uh, there was a fire, the oldest church was destroyed and what we are looking at is from the 12th century. Uh, 1140 there was a fire and after that fire this uh, new church was constructed. However, it was redeveloped several times and front facade is Baroque, not uh, Romanesque as the towers uh, are in a Romanesque style, that's the style that preceded Gothic, but uh, uh, the front facade is Baroque from 1600s and 1700s. Towers, they maybe look alike, but they are not exactly the same. The right one is bigger, the left one is slimmer, and they call them Adam and Eve. And even the one on the left, it's a little bit leaning aside. And as a joke, I say, Eve wants to run away from Adam, but she's not able to do it. So only leaning on a side. Let's continue the lit up uh, by sun building with that interesting entrance with columns. Uh, this uh, is a uh, redevelopment from 1700s. Empress Maria Theresa purchased several of the noble palaces here, among them Rosenberg's palace, and he got redeveloped this place into a new um, complex for impoverished noble ladies. So started in mid-1700s. It was then uh, used for like a welfare for noble ladies, those who were uh, either single or widows uh, and uh, uh, for some reason they were not able to live in their palaces, uh, in their residences if they were where their residences were destroyed by by fire or during the war or who knows but once these ladies but there were conditions they had to prove their noble origin several generations back and they had to be more than 24 years old so those were the conditions and this uh, um, this, um, this uh, institute for impoverished noble ladies was in function and in existence until January of 1919. Now look over there. Before I leave this place, I want to let you see the beauty of the oldest part of the cathedral. Now, this is that part that was founded in 1344. So the view of this kind, people could enjoy uh, from the uh, 
late 1300s and uh, 1400s as well. Then in the uh, 1400s, after 1419, when uh, defenestration of the first defenestration throwing of the windows sparked the uh, period of Hasside Wars, the works were interrupted. Uh, only in the second half of 1400s, the situation uh, changed and improved, and the works could uh, partly continue, but not really. It was more just to close it down. Then in the 16th century, Habsburgs, who got on the Czech throne, continued the construction. But uh, then the Thirty Years' War broke out after 1618, so another long break. That's why uh, the cathedral was finished in 1929. So uh, 1400 to 15, 14, excuse me, from 14th century to 15th century, then from uh, 16th to 17th, and then from 19th to 20th century. Those are the three periods when this cathedral was under construction. But let's take a walk now from this courtyard. There is this additional structure, the chapel of St. John of Nepomuk. He is actually buried inside of the Cathedral of St. Vitus. There is a monument, monumental silver grave made of two tons of silver. But that's something what you really have to come to Prague and see the interiors. Uh, now from outside, we can see this these beautiful towers in light of sun and here you can recognize side entrance that's the 16th century decoration with the motif of saint george and we are moving uh, we are walking from the west to the east there is a golden lane. I will just quickly peep into the golden lane because uh, on my website you can find a more detailed tour of uh, the golden lanes. It's a small street which was created by castle artillerymen, castle shooters, starting by 15th century to 16th century. People lived on that golden lane until 1953 when the castle administration moved them away. Uh, the exit is by the tower in front of us, but let's take a little detour in direction to Golden Lane to give you an idea of where it is located. Let's see if there are any of the visitors because the construction site on our right hand side makes impression that this place is closed but it is not and the golden lane is hidden behind these buildings on our left hand side and behind the golden lane there is that deep valley that we we saw uh, at the beginning of our our tour so during the daytime, uh, they are um, turnstiles. They will let you enter only when you have the ticket. But now it's accessible free of charge. And you see there's a group of people. When I was here last time, I was here completely on my own. Nobody was here. So it goes here to the left. It goes here to the right. This is that golden lane, this charming street with uh, the variety of these colorful houses. During the daytime also this door is open and then you take steps up and you can walk through the corridor uh, below the roof. You can recognize that there is, a, there is a roof above the defensive corridor and below that corridor the space uh, in shape of arches like a bridge along the wall uh, that space was converted into small small rooms where first those artillerymen lived and then the most different people used uh, these places including them the uh, including 
goldsmiths, so that's why there's that name Golden Lane. And the blue building we are looking at that's related uh, with uh, famous Prague Jewish writer Franz Kafka. He spent here one winter from 1916 to 17. It's this one in particular. Let's have a look closer. Now it's a bookstore inside, but it's closed by now. But I want to show you the sign. Franz Kafka lived here. That's the translation. And here you can find a book, a country doctor. Uh, it consists of short stories that he wrote when he lived here. So Franz Kafka, Jewish writer from Prague. So this is a golden lane, charming street with an interesting history. Even this like a magical history or, or mysterious history because it's believed that, uh, that alchemists used to live here. And uh, in the 16th century, alchemists worked uh, for Emperor Rudolf II and he wanted them to find a way how to convert common metals into gold or at least silver. But they were not very successful, I can tell you. Well, now we are returning. So we cannot use the shortcut on the left. We have to walk around. Let's do that. And uh, we are heading the end of our tour in a short while. I would like to finish by the view of the city center because by this time of the day, it's really so pretty. So that's what I really want to share with you. So stay with me for just a few more minutes. I'm trying to walk a little bit faster because it's getting kind of darker and obviously it's not then so well visible. This way it is where we came from. So if you have a look up you can see you can see one of those two towers of Basilica of St. George. But now we are going to turn this way and there is one of fortification towers of the castle complex. So the reconstruction here is in progress. When I spoke about uh, Institute for Impoverished Noble Ladies, uh, there is an exhibition where you can learn about how these ladies used to live and uh, how their rooms looked like. And this is Rosenberg's palace, but this exhibition at this moment is not open even during the daytime. Um, maybe with the growing number of visitors and uh, the changes that I hope uh, come after the uh, this pandemic, uh, when tourists start to come, I'm sure that all the places uh, will reopen again to all the visitors. Uh, there is a newly restored Burgraves Palace, a Renaissance building decorated by this graffito. There used to be a toy museum uh, under communism. There used to be the house for uh, the like after school activities of uh, children and youth. There used to be a naked young boy. It's gone. Let's see over there. This place also served as a open air theater for some years, but um, well, not anymore. Burgrave's Palace, newly restored. Look at the coats of arms here and dates and on the opposite side there is the only private palace that you find on the grounds of Prague Castle, Lopkowitz Palace. Lopkowitz had been owners of this property uh, from uh, 1500s and it was only in the 20th century when they lost this property and even twice. First during the Nazism when they refused to, uh, to cooperate with Nazis after the occupation and they better ran away to, to England. And then later under communism 
when they returned back, reclaimed all the property back, but, but uh, uh, their property was uh, confiscated after 1948 when the communists uh, got in power. So only after the Velvet Revolution, after 1989, uh, they managed to reclaim it back. Now there's a beautiful art exhibition on uh, two floors of this building. Uh, there's also a terrace from there. There's a fantastic view and restaurant, uh, one floor lower. So that means also uh, with, with a view of the city, such a view that I want to show you in a moment. We are going to see the city center and we are going to finish our tour by that view. advertising Velázquez Infanta Margarita Lobkowitz Palace. So you see the treasures that you can find. Lobkowitz is very, very musically active and they sponsored Beethoven and uh, uh, Vranitsky and uh, they were friends with numerous of the artists and even they played and sang uh, themselves uh, and played the theater, played musical instruments. So unfortunately, uh, there is this construction here, but I would like to let you see the view of the city. This is a part of old fortification. And look at this fantastic view. Isn't that very nice, very pretty? What we are seeing uh, in the middle, let me move it closer. This is the Church of St. Nicholas, a beautiful Baroque architecture. The church on the left, this one, is the Church of Virgin Mary Victorious, where you can find so-called Holy Infant of Prague. Uh, church of St. Thomas is this one. There are numerous other churches. There's also the copy of an Eiffel Tower up on the hill. We saw it earlier. And I would like to show you also. So right here, you can see Charles Bridge. This is what is in the middle. This is the bridge tower of the Charles Bridge. And you can enjoy this fantastic view. Look at the bridges, look at the river. I think this is a very lovely time of the day, peaceful by the sunset. And ladies and gentlemen, I will now switch to myself so here I am I hope you enjoyed my tour I hope to meet you one day in Prague and I want to meet you personally because all this is without uh, that uh, that atmosphere without that ambiance that's all around uh, just the pictures but yet I believe that you enjoyed it uh, I wish you to stay well stay healthy and I'm looking forward sort of meeting you if not personally so by another tour Stay, stay healthy, stay well, all the best, goodbye.